Welcome everyone, I am Michael, your host for Antediluvian Revelations. This is the sixth episode of the fourth edition podcast reading of the poetic retelling of the Book of Enoch the Prophet. The complete text of this fourth edition is currently available as a free download in PDF format from polyetloshipubs.com. Be sure to download your free copy of this revelational guide to the future of mankind. In this episode, Enoch learns the fate of the fallen watchers and more details about the future of humanity as he travels the universe with the holy watchers who have been tasked to educate him prior to returning him to earth. Enoch meets with each of the holy ones in turn and learns about their different characteristics and personalities. He also learns the fate of humanity and sees the first vision of the apocalypse. The book of Enoch was the first text of ancient Hebrew literature that predicts the apocalyptic end of mankind and the advent of Jesus Christ. Get ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Get ready for the apocalypse. Enoch looked up from his fervent recording while in place before the throne of God Almighty to brush a tear from his cheek. The ferocity of the Lord's voice has such effect to bring tears to the eyes of those who hear his anger and wrath. God continued. And as to the death of the giants, wheresoever their spirits depart from their bodies, let their flesh perish without burial or judgment. Thus shall they perish until the day of the great consummation of earth, when the final destruction shall happen for these watchers, and the impious among men who will perish on judgment day. And to these fallen watchers, who have sent thee to pray for them, who in the beginning were in heaven glorious and favored, say, In heaven have you been. Secret things, however, I have not manifested in you to know, yet you have known these reprobated mysteries of seduction and sexual enticement, these secrets you have related to women in the hardness of your heart, and by these mysteries have women and mankind multiplied evil on earth. Say to them, Never, therefore, shall you obtain peace. With the finality of God's judgment written for all the watchers to know, Enoch returned to a place on the floor where he could again stand. The throne of God, which had been all glowing with his greatness, dimmed as he departed that place not needing to be there longer. A smoke filled the room as the Mighty One retired from there. Upon completion of his mission to inform the fallen watchers of their fate and the fate of their offspring, Enoch was taken away into the heavens to see a further vision, a warning of what will become of all this because of what has occurred for mankind. The end result of the crime committed upon the innocents by a condemned species of extraterrestrial beings. Although they may, upon Judgment Day, proclaim again their innocence and accuse the daughters of men for enticing them to sin against God, all such actions in their defense are ungodly and impiously blasphemous because God does not make mistakes in the course of judgment, not ever. From that place which was the throne room of God, the spiritual beings raised Enoch up into another place where he might receive the blessings of God, a place where there was another projection of burning fire, and those spirits, as it pleased them, assumed the likeness of men for Enoch's sake. They carried Enoch to a lofty spot, to a mountain, to the top of which reached into heaven. There he beheld the receptacle of light and of thunderous sound all around. He stayed where he was at the extremity of the room, where it was deepest and the view was widest that he saw the entire screening of the show as if he were seated in a movie theater, viewing the visions projected in light on a screen. Above him, Enoch could see a bow of fire, arrows in their quiver, a sword of fire, and every form of lightning striking before his eyes. All of this light became images with sound in front of his eyes, and this prediction of moving picture technology was one of many and the Diluvian revelations. The spirits raised him up to hear the sounds of a babbling stream to see a great fire in the west which received all of the setting of the sun, 
The sight of it all became a river of fire flowing like water, emptying into the great sea and ocean that was farther westward than Enoch knew. The spirit showed him every large river in a flurry of light and fire until suddenly a great darkness appeared that went into a place where all flesh migrates upon death and he saw a mountain of gloom covered with snow and winter and water flowing from it in summer where as a spring it emptied from a height into the ab every abyss on earth the spirit showed Enoch the mouths of all the rivers in the world and the mouths of the deepest pools the bottomless pits and endless water Enoch saw a vision of the earth's destruction to come in a great deluge he saw a vision of the ice comet that was going to cause the flood Next, Enoch surveyed the receptacles of all the winds, with the perception that they contributed to adorn the whole of creation, preserving the earth upon its foundation, and he saw it as a stone, supporting the reaches of earth. He saw the four winds which became the atmosphere of earth, separating it from the firmament of heaven, and that these winds occupied the exalted sky, arising in the midst between heaven and earth as if pillars supporting heaven. Enoch saw the winds which turned the sky and support the clouds, the orb of the sun, and all the stars that rise and fall over the earth. Enoch saw the path of angels, and they are here marked for all to know. Into the firmament of heaven above the earth, Enoch passed towards the south, burned by the sun both day and night. Enoch saw seven other mountains formed of glorious stones, with two to the east and five more to the south. Those lofty mountains of stone to the east were of a variegated stone. One was made of marguerite a grayish to yellow mica formed in intense heat, and another of antimony, a silvery, semi-metallic, and toxic element, these two being the planets Mercury and Venus, respectively. Those towards the south were of a red stone. The first was Mars. The middle one reached to heaven like the throne of God, a throne composed of alabaster. The top was sapphire, this one being Jupiter, having an aura at its poles. A blazing fire surrounded all of these other mountains, which made a magnetosphere for each of them. Beyond these planets, which made up the solar system, Enoch saw the extended area where waters collected, this being the Oort cloud comprised of icy planetesimal bodies, forever frozen from which comets spring forth as terrestrial fountains. Deep in the fiery columns of heaven, Enoch beheld the fire of other galaxies and the far reaches of the heavens. He beheld those galactic lights innumerable, where they appeared in all directions and not high or into the deep. Beyond all of these fountains of fire, Enoch saw a place that had neither firmament of heaven above it, nor the solid ground of earth underneath it. There was no water below it, nor anything on wing in its sky above. It was a spot desolate because it was outer space, beyond the solar system. From that space, Enoch beheld seven stars like great blazing mountains, and like spirits entreating him to come closer, inviting his presence to them. Then the angel, who was Enoch's guide, said, this place until the marriage of heaven and earth until judgment day when heaven and earth consummate will be the confinement of the stars and all the hosts of heaven it was in this moment when enoch heard the angels speak that he came to know the course of all human history as it had been altered by the fallen watchers the angel who was enoch's guide in this vision of all the universe said the stars which roll over fire are those which transgressed before their time, before the commandment of God, for they came before it was their proper season. Therefore they offended him for becoming revealed too early, the power of stars being discovered sooner than God allowed. So he bound them until judgment day for their crimes. This year, a secret year, 
will one day become known to men what upon the earth these transgressing stars, the power of which men came to have, before it was a time God chose for man to have it, will announce the day of consummation between heaven and earth, so that the fallen watchers, the evil spirits of their offspring and mankind, will suffer the final disposition of their crimes after the millennia of punishment has passed such that all of these things come to pass. The sword of light which danced in front of Enoch lighting the room and making all of this vision more real than his own sight had ever seen suddenly ended with darkness and silence and the angel who spoke appeared from some unknown place. This unknown angelic guide stepped forward, saying, I am Uriel. He appeared in the likeness of a man, but he was an angel, an extraterrestrial originating entity. Then Uriel said, Here the angels who cohabited with women appointed their leaders, and being illustrious in their appearance with great variation of influence, which became both physical and spiritual upon the earth as lies, made men profanely swear allegiance to their powers and suppositions, causing them to err, such that they worship devils as though they were gods. For in that great day of judgment, upon which all will be judged until they are consumed in fire, their wives will also be judged, for they are not innocent of enticing men to sin against God. These angels, the holy watchers, who had taken Enoch from the earth to be in the presence of God in his throne room, were sad that their brothers would suffer a punishment, a confinement, and torture only Raquel could know. They saw those same daughters of men and understood how their brothers had been enticed by their beauty, that those women among men might be to blame for the fall of their brethren, but they were spiritual, capable of assuming a form similar to a human being when it became necessary to interact with mankind. One among the saints, the teller of truth and knowing God, being likened unto him, stepped forward. Michael said, Those fallen angels of heaven led men astray, that they might salute them and follow them as false gods. They will say to men that God had made a child within a human female, and this child was the Son of God, being born of a virgin. These men, pagan Romans, evoked the evil spirits of the fallen watcher's offspring, became engorged with their murderous power, and killed an innocent man a Jew, the Messiah, deliverer of humanity from the throes of eternal death, died at the hands of men who worshiped devils in a conquest to rule the world. An innocent and loving man delivered the message of forgiveness and the gift of eternal life in God the Father, the Creator, and that God is the Holy Spirit. Constantine made all to believe in a lie that the man they killed was a god so he could wash his hands of the murderous crime while replacing truth with the principles of his own gods who were false. For all of the torment suffered by those transgressing fallen watchers, men continued to think that there was no crime in any of it, that an eternal being such as God or those sons of God could rightly mate with the daughters of men to have offspring that would be the son of God and be God himself on earth. The truth of what happened and why it offended God became concealed from mankind by Satan's spawn because other pagan idolaters concealed the truth in badly forged copies of the original no longer existing, mankind will suffer the horrors of eternal torment of God's judgment, burning forever in the fires of a hell come to earth, when the power of stars are unleashed in a final war, a war to end all wars, the end of mankind, and the end of the earth. Enoch, in his silence, saw the likeness of the end of all things. No other human being saw it the same as he saw it from the heavens, 
No other prophet has ever told it the way it appears here, and there will be no other prophet who will ever say it again. Well, this concludes episode six of Antediluvian Revelations, a poetic retelling of the Book of Enoch, the Prophet. This episode presented subsegments seven through twelve of Part One, Canto Three, from the fourth edition. All of the music selections used in these podcasts come from YouTube's content creator resources, and all tracks are copyright free for content creators who publish their works on YouTube. This audio podcast series is available for free on all of your favorite audio platforms or on YouTube in the Polyet Losha Publishing YouTube channel. In addition to apocalyptic visions, Enoch sees the various technological advances that will become known to mankind prior to the apocalypse. With such things as projected images, electricity, refrigeration, and even nuclear energy, Enoch's experiences were not so easily described by a man of his time and limited intellect, but these things would become more commonly known by men who would live in the time on earth when the apocalypse would occur. Be sure to subscribe for notifications of the next release. Thank you for listening. I am Michael.